Hey guys, Nas here with another video. In this video, I'll be going over the best build for Arms Master. Hikari was my favorite protagonist, so I'll be using this on him, but for anyone who wants to mid-max, the best War Master is actually Ochet. You can use this exact same build on her, so with that out the way, let's get into this, yeah? We'll first go over to equipment. You'll want the highest physical attack, weapon, and critical hit rate. The battle-tested weapons on average have both of these stats we're looking for. I have a video on my channel already covering all their location, which can be found in the description or the cards on the upper right. The Giant's Club can be found in Ivory Ravine. The staff and sword increase our damage output of our staple skill, Six Volt Strike. This will attack a random enemy with each weapon once. If it's a single target, then they'll take a beating. For the shield, you'll want Bodyguard's Vantage. This can be obtained after completing Veronica's side quests. All you need to do is go to Sai and inquire with the grandma, then come back. For the helm, you'll want to go to Timber Rain and bribe this NPC during the night. This will unlock the helmet to be purchased at the shop. The butler's tailcoat can be obtained by finishing Misha's side quests. The first person will be around here during the day. You'll be looking for the garbage collection information by inquiring with them. And the next person will be here during the night for a man in the brown coat. Onto the accessories. Fang of Ferocity will increase your damage when boosting. Since we'll definitely want to be boosting for maximum damage, this is a no-brainer and it could be found in the Curious Nest Cave. Finisher's Claw is the next one. This will increase our critical damage when we critically hit. Since we'll be having a very high chance to crit, this is an easy equip. This can be found in the Nameless Isle. Next we'll go over to skills. After testing out all potential combination, these are the four to perform the best. Who start from Merchant. This will allow us to start the battle with 2 BP so we can destroy any trash battle. Since we'll be hitting very hard, the damage cap will stop us from seeing our true potential. And that's why we need deal more damage to surpass that damage cap from the warrior. Master of Offense increases our chance to critically hit if the enemy is broken. And Peak Performance will increase our damage by 50% as long as we're full on HP. This is also from Arms Master. If you're missing any rusty weapons, I'll have my guide in the description. Let's go over Teammate Synergy. I'm using Throne A with the Merchant sub job. Throne A's passive allows us to start battle with an attack buff during night. She's using the Merchant so she could donate BP to another ally so this build can come to life. Tenemos is used for similar reasons. During the night, he applies a defense down to the enemy. Tenemos also has one of the best latent powers, allowing him to break enemy shield with any attack. He has the Scholar Subjob equipped as it has the highest potential hit count with Elemental Barrage. This will break 6 to 8 shields on an enemy, meaning most bosses will get deleted by Hikari. And lastly, Cassie is used because she gives us AoE BP every turn after the first turn thanks to her concoct. Cassie will be getting 1 BP from Throne so she could get 5 mixture on the first turn and then repeat if the enemy lives for turn 2. For this reason, you'll want as much speed on Throne so she goes first. The equipment on Tenemos and Cassie doesn't really matter. For skills, you'll want Boost BP from Merchant, a step ahead from Inventor. This allows you to take a turn before the fight initially begins, as long as there's no ambush or surprise attack. This is completely busted and I abused it. If you're missing any inventions, I'll also have my guide in the description. Full power from Merchant so Casti and Tenemos can always use their lane power in every battle. You can add any XP or JP passives since these are the only three that you need to fully utilize this build. Now that we're fully set up, I'll do a quick battle here to showcase how you want to generally use this build. Throne should have went first but sometimes the game rolls a different order so I'm going to defend to go first next turn. Now we'll donate BP to act like we went first, even though she'll get 3 BP next turn anyway. Let's just pretend she wouldn't. Hmm, I can't defend as we'll get Casty, so I think I'm just going to do a light attack since I go before the boss anyway next turn. Remember, we're trying to replicate the optimal order. Casty will use Medical Concoct here to get maximum BP. Lay in power so we don't use our materials. You want to use 3 pomegranate leaves. 
Diffusing Serum, and Strengthening Serum. This will give all allies 6 BP. Now we'll break the foe by using a Maximum Elemental Barrage with the Latent Power. For optimal damage, you'll want to boost twice with Hikari and use his Latent Power with Henka. Then, on the extra turn, you want to use a max 6 full strike. There's only two bosses I came across that live the full burst potential, so for everything else, you just want to do a max full strike and you win with ease. Hopefully this video helped you defeat any boss you were stuck on, and if you enjoyed this video, consider checking out the description for more Octopath content. And don't forget, if this video brought you value, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see more, as I plan on making a ton of Octopath Traveler 2 videos, and I play a wide array of RPG games, and I break them down just like this. Until the next video, I'll see ya.